having been in the charity for the past three years, you know, it's been a very eventful three years, having multiple uh, opportunities such as, you know, hosting a gala, organizing a gala, um, or managing a large team, or going abroad on Journey Mar to actually see the work that we do. All of these opportunities have really shaped my time in Mar. So alongside all of the amazing friendships I've made in Mar, I've also gone through a fair amount of personal and professional development. And that's all thanks to the amazing mentorship I've had from Akil. Um, he's really taught me everything I know about team management and public speaking. And, you know, he's taught me how to deal with difficult situations. He's taught me how to make hard decisions and just generally he's been a brilliant guide um, throughout this journey and I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. After about a year or so of being in the fundraising team, uh, applications for Journey Ma had opened. And I think deep down, that is one of the reasons why I joined the charity was to have this opportunity to go abroad, to see what the work that Ma is doing for myself. And also being in the fundraising team to, um, to see where the funds that we're raising here in the UK, whether it's a bake sale or a games night or a, a hike, to see where that money is going. Uh, and that was one of the most empowering, if not the most empowering things that I've done during my time in Mar. So I remember a couple of us were on our way to the airport, you know, day one of Journey Mar or day one of the journey of Journey Mar. Um, and we're talking about what, you know, what we're gonna expect, how excited we are. Um, but what's really interesting and what really surprised me was just how much bigger or how much more exciting it felt on day one of the actual health camps. So I remember the feeling of getting to the health camp on the first day. Everybody's so excited, everyone's buzzing. We've all been sort of partnered up with someone from the Bangladesh team and we're all starting to do the work. And it was insane just the number of mothers that had come through on the first day to the point where I remember I was doing health history um, on these mothers going one by one through the queue and a mother who was pregnant she got up to offer me a seat and um, that, well, that's just one of the memories that I find um, quite amazing to see just how thankful they are for the work that we're doing over there. Um, but I remember just how busy that first day was to the point where we had to regroup when we came back and kind of figure out a way to make it more efficient, run more smoothly. And so the next day, and this is in Balogunj by the way, the next day we returned to the Balogunj Health Camp, um, we implemented this kind of dual system where two health camps are running at the same time. So we've got two registrations happening on either end. We've got two kind of clinical checks happening. We've got two sets of consultations happening. And so that meant that we had turned one health camp, one big health camp into two health camps, both running simultaneously. And it was so much more organized that second day, I remember. And when we think about just that, just how many women that we're helping, 400 might, you know, seem like not too big of a number, but think about the mother and the child. So indirectly, you're helping 800 people, both mother and child. Um, and just thinking about that and how much, uh, how vast the work that we're doing at Mars and how many people it's reaching is amazing. I think one of the most poignant moments of Journey Ma um, when I went last year was towards the end of the whole trip, we get to visit the hospitals in Bangladesh. Um, so you have a full day, you get to visit a couple of hospitals and just get to see the state of maternal healthcare in these hospitals. Um, and it was that experience walking into a hospital. I remember walking in into the maternity ward, so they called, but it was actually just a huge hall of just beds, but also mattresses on the floor. And what I noticed was uh, majority of the beds were empty, but the mattresses on the floor were where the pregnant women or the women who were just given birth with their newborns were sleeping. Um, and I immediately went up to one woman and I asked her mother actually why her daughter is on the floor when there's so many beds um, available. And she said that they couldn't afford the bed and so they had to sleep on the floor. Um, and that 
shocked me because when I saw and that's when I noticed a poster or something um, the price of the bed was about 30 pounds for them is a lot but for if you just imagine 30 pounds this woman needed just to be comfortably you know sleeping on the bed with her newborn and you can imagine just the hygienic state of the place as well I then spoke to the mother uh, who was telling me about how she hadn't had a proper meal in a couple of uh, hours, how the food that they're provided is out of date sometimes, a really bad quality. And just in general, these people, when they see us, they really tell us their hardships that they're going through. Um, I then asked, just because I, I kind of felt kind of this want to hold the baby, um, just who looked so peaceful, kind of so new to the world, but to be born into this kind of state of uh, I, guess, I guess poverty um, is one thing that I'll never forget holding that baby and speaking to to his mother um, and so that's what this picture is showing I guess but I remember that day when we left the whole team when we left the hospital and went back to the van nobody was talking and we're a loud bunch we're a really active kind of we're all friends we were talking the whole trip but that day it, we were silent and I just remember, I think that was the first time we really saw the issue of maternal health care in Bangladesh.